Hey guys, Lucas Green here, and I am back with the final installment of, once again, Beast Quest Series 25, the final book, Diprox the Buzzing Terror. So we finally get to wrap up this series. It's been fun reading these books, the latest series of Beast Quest. Now officially done with it. Um, I, to, you know, to be honest, I actually read this book a while ago. I just had a few other things to get to. But now I can finally um, get on with this review. So, like always, in this story analysis, my overall, my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. If you haven't already, make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you don't care about spoilers. That being said, though, let's get through the review. Right. Tom and Eleanor were making their way after Aroa and Yara, despite being told to go home. Tom and Eleanor knew something was up, and they were determined to get to the bottom of it. After beating Glacky, they now arrived at a desert, which probably surrounded the prison where Zargon lied waiting. But soon our heroes were stopped by a sandstorm and a mysterious figure lurking within. Our heroes had no choice. They entered, they entered the sandstorm, trying to trying their best to push through, when soon they met the figure. It was Zargon. He had appeared to be a magical vision, merging with the sand. Our heroes couldn't seem able to beat him until Eleanor shot an arrow trickled with water on, on the wizard, allowing Tom to chop his head off. The villain gloated that he would win when they met in person. Our heroes continued on until they made it to, the, to a crystal forest, and beyond that Tom saw Yara and Aroha enter the castle. However, they couldn't catch up as a moat of quicksand surrounded the prison. So our heroes made a tight a tightrope bridge and crossed crossed over, trying to get into a vent to open you know, trying to get inside a vent and to open it so they could get inside. After some tension they got in and entered a room that looked like it was it was for bathing, but they encountered trouble. Tom and Eleanor found an army of statues. They wondered if they were real people turned into statues by Zargon, but they didn't stay to find out. They went up a staircase through a corridor and found Yara and Aroha, but also the latest beast. Diprox, who is a she, and after a scuffle, kidnapped the queen. Yara ran after the queen, with our heroes right behind her. They made it to the palace where Diprox had brought her, and when Tom and Eleanor, with Tom, when Tom and Eleanor went in to save the queen, they were captured. And no, to no one's surprise, it was revealed Yara was working with Zargon. She took the jewels from Aroa, gave them to Zargon, and the queen hoped Zargon would keep his word and let Zrotu go. But no, instead Zargon pulls a scene I've pulls a scene I've seen played out in um in Jackie Chan Adventures, where the villain says, You didn't provide me with the stuff the other person did. Allowing our villain to still be evil while trying to sound noble, which makes you wonder if Aroa did give him the jewels, would Zargon have kept his word? Whatever. Um however, it was revealed the jewels were fakes and Aroa had switched them with rocks and admitted she had suspicions that Yara was a traitor from the very beginning, and that's what, and that's what, that, that's what Prince Rotu told her before he was captured. The Queen put Yara to the test, basically on this quest, which explains her how, uh, how the Queen was acting weird at the end of Glacky. Our heroes broke out, Eleanor faced Yara, Tom went after Zargon, and Aroa went after Rotu. However, in the end, Zargon called Diprox and made his escape. Right, so that's basically what happened so far. Uh, I should also mention the reason Yara betrayed the Queen was she thought she was being greedy, having two kingdoms for herself. It seems she didn't seem to grasp it. Didn't grasp it was a uniting between two kingdoms. Um, P.S. In my uh, copy of this book, it had images from Glacky, which is weird around this chapter. Uh, Zargon awakened some of the statues to attack Tom as he went after Aroa. After a bit of fighting, Tom caught up with Zargon. Before Zargon could kill the Queen and the now rescued Rotu, Tom threw a crystal spear into Diprox, making the wizard fall off the buzzing terror's app, making fall off the buzzing terror, and the bee and the and the and the bug beast's acid flew everywhere, making chunks of crystal come crashing down on our heroes. They all had to run out of there from the rubble. Into they ran away from the rubble into they faced more of Zargon's goons. Yes, they, they ran away from the rubble and they bumped into more, more of Zargon's men, or crystal dudes. And I'm guessing Diprox is dead at that point, either due to the, her injuries or the falling crystal rubble that crashed upon her. Tom and Rotu and the Queens fought off the goons, made their escape, and as the palace crashed away, Eleanor was alive along with Yara, now captured. The Vakunda had, 
only being restored as and as punishment for her betrayal, Yara was ordered to build a statue for Rotu. If not, she would be sent to, to prison with Grash for, uh, who, that, which was the next option. And with that, the quest was completed. P.S. Aroa had the jewels all along. Um, and as for as for Zargon, people think he's dead, but you can see the Beast Quest is known for bringing wizards back from their supposed deadness. Um, so yeah, there is Diaprox the Buzzing Terror, easily the best book of the series, because it, it, uh, it brings all the pieces together, no surprise. So like always, going over the characters and my overall thoughts on the subject adventure. Uh, first off, Tom, the main character, very pressurised hero still. Um, I don't think he gets... He doesn't get much to do that really stands out beyond the norm. Um, so, yeah, as it stands, though, he's a good hero. Um, going after, um, going after our hero, going up, still going on with the mission to go and help um, the queen, despite the fact she was told to go home. It's nice to see they're doing that and uh, they progress forward as characters, even though it doesn't feel like there there is much. To, there isn't really much I expected from Tom in this book. From the normal what he does, but from what I see, it is it is interesting from the character. Same goes with Eleanor. Um, she may I think she has a bit more to do. Um, that one scene with the with the water arrow there and the good teamwork. Um, as for the beast defeat Diprox, well, technically, yeah, Tom did beat the beast. I would have preferred it as a duo kill, but it was still Tom was the one who helped kill the beast. Eleanor, um, quote unquote, killed um, the. Uh, uh, Zargon sand illusion thing, so they both got something to do. Aroha, this is more of a, her story throughout the um, throughout the uh, series, even though she was more treated as a background character and she only gets treated as a main character until the very end, where she admits that, oh, I was um, testing Yara all along because Rotu told me this before he was captured and she tested her to see if she was a traitor. So, yeah, it's nice to see that. Um, when um, Yara was revealed to be the traitor, um, the book kind of like, oh, this is so predictable, why would they do this? And then it was realised that the Queen actually knew this, so she tested her, so that helps uh, make the plot feel a bit better than predictable. As for Yara, there isn't really much to say really about this character at all. She, everything you would s suspect from the character is predictable and cliche. It was nice that they captured her and we got some victory out of it. So I really don't have much to say about Yara. Like, uh, we knew what you were going to do. We knew you were bad from the beginning. So there's not much to say about Yara. Zargon, um, he's an interesting wizard. He reminds me a lot of um, a, le a less popular version of Malvel. But I can see there's potential in him too. So it I would like to see more of Zargon down the road as like the evil wizard of Tengar. So it's nice to see more variety. So that I'm hoping to see more. Um, Diaprox, the beast, um, does she doesn't get much to do. Um, um, she's got acid from a, from a stinger. Which is powerful enough to melt crystals and all types of um, solids, but when she gets speared by the crystals, she and she really doesn't get much to do. When you think about it, she just buzzes around in the palace, and then she gets she takes away the queen, gets introduces um she flies away, she comes back to help Zargon out, goes after Aroa, then gets jabbed with a spear and uh, rocks fall on her or she's died by her injuries and that's the end we see of Diaprox. So the buzzing terror really doesn't get much to do from up from go here, go there and then die. When you think about it. So cut for a beast I don't think Adam's gonna put this as high on the series, if anything. If but if I had to say my favourite book beast wise, I'd say like Haxa, I guess. That's just me. Um anyway that's my thoughts. Anyway, overall, uh, story wise I think um this is a very, this is the best book for me out of the story. So yeah, it answers a lot of questions, it wraps up some arcs here and there, and it addresses some things. I really did enjoy it. Um, some I saw coming, some I didn't, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. So there is Series 25, uh, Die Frogs of the Buzzing Terror, I enjoyed the series. I will be doing like a series review and edited together all the four books together uh, when I can. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching uh, throughout the series, I really appreciate it. You know, there is one more Beast Quest book. Um, I'm, I'm up to date with Beast Quest now. Well, technically I still was, but whatever. And that'll be out in November. That's Arcana the Stonecrawler, I believe. So, yeah, I'll be doing that. Uh, people have asked me if I'm doing any sort of spin-off Beast Quest series. I am not. That's more Adam's thing than me. That's just me personally. Nonetheless, though, thank you so much for watching. There will be LEGO Customs coming up today. I think five of them. 
So there is a lot to do still. Um, I'm going to try my best. But you know me, I do get tired a lot because I do a lot of work on this channel for you guys. Um, but I'll do my very best. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys probably later for LEGO DC Super Runs Custom Builds. Until next time, like always, peace.